Okay. Stop the throat singing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's got the spectacles out. Go out there, see what I'm fucking doing. Excellent. Oh, don't do that again. <laughs> fucking hell, that is loud. Yeah. <laughs> uh. my, my one's not too bad. Try that again. You did. Sat on the go. cable. <laughs> of course you did. Is that better? Is that? Can you hear me? I can hear you perfect. I've got you in this ear, and me in that ear. Yeah, yeah. Off putting. Like what? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> this, is, this is new. Is it too loud or is it all right? No, I'm, I'm fine with that. All right. Righty ho. One, two, three. Oh dear, oh dear. dear. Why do we do this, eh? For the love of it. Yeah, supposedly. All right, okay. Ready to go? Why not? Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. I'm your co-host today, Scott. And uh, across from me again is Callum. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, very well. Yeah, not too bad. Good, man. Not Good. How's your week been? Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, it's the last couple of weeks actually, probably since our last episode, have just been uh, chaos. Yeah, uh, yeah, just just been absolutely manic. It's uh, everyone wants everything yesterday or last week, and typical insurance all left to the last minute. And yep. So it's just yeah, it, just chaos, mate. Absolute chaos. But uh, yeah, it's why uh, why I keep turning up every day, supposedly. So <laughs> for the love of it, <laughs> for the love of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm in the same boat. Really. It's not for the, not for the fun of it. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> What about, uh, what about yourself? Good one. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a bit of a bit of a strange week. I must say, you have, haven't you? Well, yeah. a very strange week. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was. Uh, it was on uh, Friday morning. Um, right, I yeah. was getting ready to set off for work, and I always have my uh, car keys on with my house keys, and they're yep. part of a big chain thing. You know, a yep. little bit inconspicuous, not inconspicuous at all. Um, mm. And they always go on this the hook in yep. the kitchen. So Friday morning, I go out there, get get ready, grab my keys, and my car keys on on there. Right. So I was right. like, all right, <laughs> okay, going to be one of those mornings then. Yeah. So I've looked all around the house, I can't find my car keys. And so I think, right, okay, maybe sometimes I when I put the car in the garage, I leave the keys in the ignition. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, well, what, what I'll do, I'll go out there and I'll see if they're in the ignition, because we lock the garage up and everything, you know, but yeah. um, go out there. No. <laughs> no keys. Open up the I door do. and everything. No, turn the lights on. Yeah. No, no, no. Nothing. Right. So, no, okay. Maybe they're in, still in the jeans that I wore yesterday. So yep. I'll go back in, have to take my shoes off. Yep. Go upstairs, a nice new carpet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll creep back into our bedroom and check the washing bit. No, they're not in the jeans either. So I'm like, fucking right, sake, okay. Yeah. So what I need to do now, I need to go in the Sam's bag, get mm. her car key and I'll use that. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Fair enough, yeah. Luckily enough, that was in there. It was yeah. in her bag. Yeah. Exactly where I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah. So like, brilliant. Okay, so I get in, get into the car, pull it out of the garage, out of the gates that we've got as well. Yeah. And uh, so I jump back out of the car to go close it all up. Mm. And uh, what is there right in front of the garage, right on the floor? <laughs> Only my fucking <laughs> car keys. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Right in the place where you'd have to pull it where the handle is. So where you yeah. put the lock in and, and you all of that. Twist the handle and yeah. that's exactly yeah, it. Yeah. Sitting there right there on, on the floor. Dry as a bone. <laughs> Bearing in mind the ground was raining, wet as it? well. Yeah. This was weird. That's weird, yeah. Really, if they'd really been really there weird. from the night before or uh, wherever, you'd think they'd be wet like everything else was. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, but that that wasn't the the end of the weirdness. No, that Friday was just morning. the start of it, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So do tell. Oh, good grief. <laughs> so yeah, as you know, I like to tinker with my cars and yep, you know do. change a few bits and pieces. You know, make it my own. Yeah. You know, void the warranties. Absolutely. And all that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I put a new steering wheel on. Yeah. And it's all safe. It's all good. It's all exactly where it needs to be. Um. And so basically, what happens is that I'll come out of my 
driveway and turn left to get mm. onto the road. Yep. The horn starts going off nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> like this I'm like oh my god I'm in a panic the suddenly because it's six o'clock in the bloody morning yeah, you live in a tiny little like village yeah. sort of thing, didn't you so it's not like you're it, it can be drowned out by other noise no <laughs> and it's and so we've got we've got farmers fields off to our right so yeah the sound travels so probably the yeah. next town over to hurt me as well <laughs> so, yeah. so I've panicked I've turned the car off but obviously the horn still works with the without the ignition going. So yeah. Oh crap! Fucking hell. So I'm moving. I'm hitting it and everything just to try and stop me. From, <laughs> going if you're down, give it a cloud. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I jump out of the car and I sprint back to my garage, yeah. get an Allen key, and I take the steering wheel off, <laughs> and then I find out exactly what it was. It was the the the, the cable that attaches to the button in the back right. had come off and got yeah. wedged and stuck in between the plastic surround <laughs> and the, the boss, which is what yeah. the, 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 the adapter for the That's steering right. wheel. Yeah. I have no idea. How, how, would, how would it do that without it being would, manipulated? No idea, just, mate. Because you can get the, you can get it back out. Could no, you? I couldn't get my fingers yeah. in. It's so, like, so like you would have done it and then put mate, the steering wheel on. There was a dog walker that went by giving me the evil eye as well. I'm like, no, I can't. You know, <laughs> I've got keys. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm not stealing it, promise. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> please. So, yeah, I had a bit of a mad mental... Yeah, great start to the end of the week. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that was a weird one. So I ended up leaving half hour late. Yeah, which is always ideal on a Friday. Mm, yeah. Indeed. Absolutely. So, but managed to get into work on time. So, you know... Glad no, to hear it. No panic there, guys. <laughs> We've got you here safe and well. Indeed. So, uh, yeah. all is good in the world. <laughs> what was weird enough as well, we had another weird thing that's happened around mine, was when... Because yeah. you had to get dropped off to mine, and then we came to I the did, studio. Then we travelled together, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, I, yeah. I, I still can't can't explain that. Get my head around that. So basically, <clears throat> what had happened was, um, Gavin was having difficulty finding my place. And bearing in mind, at one point we were parked right outside it, and, and I mean right outside. Yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't see you there. No, and I couldn't I was see standing you. out the front. Yeah, and I didn't see you go past me. Yeah, but then when I told you that you'd gone too far, and I was like, okay, no, you've hit the. Uh, yeah. you've hit the garden centre it's on the wrong side of the road turn around come back this way yeah. and then I saw you come back yeah. waving me arms about going, still, oi, oi, still couldn't you, see you you and your wife yeah. like, like, you couldn't see the house didn't see the, the whacking great big bloody tree on the, on the front garden didn't see you mm. it, it's, it's like it wasn't there as weird as that sounds yeah. because we were quite a, like before you phoned me and said, oh, you know, you've, you've gone too far. We would we, we had parked up at this point. Yeah. And it turns out we'd parked up right outside your living room window. Pretty much. So we're opposite your house. And I didn't see the house. It's like it just didn't it wasn't you. there. It was just, it was it's so bizarre. And we drove past it probably three times before I finally figured out that that's where you live. Oh, yeah. This is the thing. I ended up um, speaking to um, Justin, our Patreon. Our Patreon. And spoke to, spoke to him about it. And he's got a friend, Claire. Yeah. Um, yeah. So shout out to Claire. Yep. And, Thanks, Claire. <laughs> um, she said, um, you don't happen to have any mushrooms growing in your garden at all, do you? And I was like, actually, yeah. over the past a couple of weeks, circle formation. <laughs> there seems to be a couple of circles of, of yeah. these mushrooms that have popped up in my back garden. She goes, <clears throat> I'm telling you now, you got Faye. Yeah. And they're, they're messing with you. They're cloaking your place and then well, taking your keys. Before you had that conversation, I had joked, didn't I, saying that you must have cloaked your house because yeah. there's no other way I wouldn't have seen it. It's weird. I mean, honestly, guys, we're not making this sort of stuff no, up. No, not it's just like... for the benefit of the content or anything because we just <laughs> make ourselves look daft. We're not that creative. <laughs> no, no, no. Not that imaginative, sadly. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I joked about it beforehand. And then, yeah, you had that conversation with Claire who do sort of brought it up as like, a, not by any chance, and it was like, Mm. okay <laughs> well yeah based on you yeah. know, previous episodes <laughs> yeah. and, and stuff and I thought oh this guy can't possibly no be true yeah you know, that'd like, just be our luck wouldn't it yeah, <laughs> yeah I've got, suddenly got some little bugger running around my house moving stuff yeah. about like a cobalt I'm, yeah, I'll probably cobalt. have a cobalt <laughs> <Yeah. I>? <laughs> these two knobheads <laughs> are diving into uh, our existence let's uh, mess with them <laughs> <Yeah>. a little bit <laughs> just hide yeah. his house <laughs> tell you what pop over to Callum's place for a little while please <laughs> <laughs> That, yeah. yeah, that'd be ideal. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do always joke with uh, joke with the wife saying that we've got moving fairies <laughs> in our house because I'll put something down and rest assured the bastard thing won't be there <laughs> when I go when I go to look for it. It'll be put somewhere else. Yeah, this was his 
you know, the wife tidying up. Of course it is. I make a joke saying it's the uh, moving fairies because <laughs> no one, everyone swears blind. They oh, haven't, I don't know where it is. They haven't seen it. They haven't touched it. Yeah. But it, it's somewhere where I will just naturally never put it. <laughs> so, but now I think of it. Now you think. <laughs> maybe it. it was actually moving mm. fairies. <laughs> well, this is the thing as well. So uh, carry on with my conversation um, from Claire. She was saying that she's got a fae in her place. And oh, right. Okay. It lives in on top of the kitchen cabinets. So, you know, you've okay, got the, yeah, the yeah. higher yep. cabinets. Mm -hmm. She says it lives up there and it nicks her spoons. Um, <laughs> it takes like cutlery, <laughs> pieces of jewellery. So if she can't find something... She looks at the top of the She looks up there yeah. and it's up there. That's weird. Which is weird. So you've got a fairy or a magpie. <laughs> 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 well, she doesn't hear yeah. any magpie. As I say, magpie like would be easier to spot you'd, you'd, or hear, you'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. I don't often get, a conversa get to like converse with people that are like... Straight up, yeah, that exists. That's, that's what it is, and that's yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. Quite, it's quite fascinating hearing her take on it. Yeah, especially when we, you know we believe it to an extent, don't we? Because we go over the, these cryptids and we dive into them and we try and either prove or disprove their existence and mm. you know and whatever else. But to actually have an experience and have someone else of that Validate kind of it. mind frame or you know or that belief actually say. Well, by the way, did you, and we didn't. You didn't mention anything beforehand, but she was like, "I don't suppose you've got blah blah blah." And he was like, "Yeah, I have." Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Bang, that's what it is." Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that you know, there's there could also be another, you know, explanation, but possibly, yeah. I don't know what it would be because your house was <laughs> no. not there. <laughs> you were not. I did uh, not see you standing there waving. Yeah, out the front in me uh, in me socks and trainers and like uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it was a clear day, and I know you're not the, the tallest fella, but I still would have seen you standing <laughs> there. Thought, you would have seen the cue ball with, with me dome. <laughs> yeah. You see the glare off me forehead at the very least. Exa yeah, it I must just have done. yeah. <laughs> it's just unexplained, man. It, yeah. it, was, it was very peculiar. Yeah, so very, very odd. Very odd indeed. Yeah. So we've yes, been very we've odd. Had some muckabouts with the fay, I think. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're treading on. Uh, yeah, sacred tempered, ground. Yeah, so sacred ground. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. So I suppose we better get on with the actual episode. Let's get on eh? with it, shall we? So, yeah. But before we do, before we big do, big shout out again to our Patreon, yeah, Justin, Justin. Thank you very much for your Cheers, continued man. support, my yeah, friend. Thank you. Um, and also thank you to Hellfire Studio, who is our sponsor and our host as well. Yeah, host and home. Yeah. Yeah. So Hellfire Studios, they are Essex per first podcast, film, and photography studio situated just forty-five minutes from London. Hellfire Studio also offers full creative content creation. Visit hellfirecreative.com for more information on that. Absolutely. But as a listener of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast, you can also take a full advantage of our 20% off discount code yep. for podcast, video, and photography services at hellfirestudio.uk. Absolutely. So, and all you need to do with that is when you get to your checkout, you input your code CRYPTID. And you got your twenty percent off, there guys. There you go. There you go. Like we don't give you enough with this brilliant content, Wonderful but you content. get discounts as well. I mean, if that's not reason enough to support your favourite podcast, Excellent. I don't know what is. Yeah, this is true. This is true. <laughs> so, this episode we are going to be looking into trolls. We are. Yeah, we've done a little bit of a, a flip mode on this as well, haven't we? So we have. This which, time you've taken. Yeah. The accounts and uh, encounters and, and, and what stories. Not. Yeah. And I've gone down the uh, the origins and the more factual You have, stuff. and it was it was odd. Um, to, it, it, it was good in a way because it, it kept it fresh. It meant I had to do a, take a different approach and, mm. you know, look into it in a slightly different way. But uh, it, it was weird. And admittedly, it did take me a little bit longer than usual to sort of get into it and, you know, find, you know, the flow and the, the right sort of sources and... You know websites and uh, and whatever else, but yeah. uh, but no, it's been good. Yeah, how did excellent. you find it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed like, actually going down the more factual sort of thing. And yeah. uh, as you know, I, I mm. came to you with an idea for for future episodes. Yes, you on, have. Yeah, on how we may uh, present our yeah. content to you guys. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it actually. Yeah, doing it a little bit like this. So. And on that note. On that note. <laughs> yeah. So trolls. Yes. A troll is a being in Scandinavian folklore, including Norse mythology. Um, in Old Norse sources, uh, beings described as trolls dwell within isolated rocks, mountains, and or caves. Yep. They generally live uh, together in small family units and are very rarely helpful to human beings. Yep. So troll was mostly a, like a, a blanket term that was in, encompassed many other beings mm. similar to fae 
Yeah, I see. Um, so in later Scandinavian folklore, trolls actually became beings within their own right, mm. uh, where they uh, live far from human habitation. They're not Christianized as well. So right, they're okay. not considered the devil. Right, okay, um, this makes a change. So actually, <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, Mr. <laughs> Boucher hasn't waded in yet. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're considered, but they are considered dangerous to humans because they're not Christianized. Right, okay. So it's, it's still a little bit of Mrs. Boucher saying stay away yeah. from them. They play too much foosball. Foosball. <laughs> so depending on the source, their appearance varies greatly. Trolls may be ugly and slow-witted, or they look and behave exactly like human beings with mm. no particular grotesque human char like, characteristics about them. Yeah. And it reminds me of the Black Eyed Children episode and the story that I found where the lad looked like he had like this this underbite and it almost yeah, okay. troll -like. be saying, Yeah, yeah. Um, which I thought was really weird that mm. potentially they could be within human form. Yeah, exactly. Because I yeah. always had this this image of that the trolls were not not the uh, the ones that sing along with Justin Timberlake. But <laughs> no, no, not quite those <laughs> but ones. But more so, like the image that I've got in my head is like like the ones from The Hobbit. Yeah, like the, the mountain the trolls mountain from trolls, Lord of the Rings, thing, and yeah, you know, that's always what I had in in my mind. Or, or like the British um, ogre. Like, like Shrek, yeah. like that type of thing, like grotesque, big, monstrous kind of... Yeah, a bit like onions. Creature, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so a troll was used, um, it was described, uh, used to describe creatures such as Jotun, um, yeah. or Mountain Dweller, mm. a witch, an abnormally strong or large or ugly person, an evil spirit, a ghost, a magical boar, a heathen demigod, a demon, or a berserker. Right, yeah, okay. Um, Berserker kind of makes sense kind from of makes what we sense. know of what their mentality was like. Well, so I can see what, how one would have influenced the other. And they drink a magic mushroom potion and uh, yeah. <laughs> put on an animal skin and transform into you that. Go animal, have it, yeah. You know? <laughs> go have it. <laughs> <laughs> have it. <laughs> have it. <laughs> um, again, so trolls are sometimes associated with landmarks in like Scandinavian folklore, which at. Uh, all good? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah. I'll start that bit again. Sorry. That's all right, no worries. Um, trolls are sometimes associated with landmarks in Scandinavian folklore, which at times may be explained as formed from a troll expo exposed to sunlight, hmm. much like they were depicted in The Hobbit. Yep. So, troll... The etymology, the, where the word actually comes from as well. So Absolutely. old Norse nouns of troll or troll. 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 <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, variously means uh, demon, fiend, werewolf, which I thought was weird. Yeah, that was an odd one. And Jotun. Right, yeah. Jotun yeah. meaning uh, the ice giants. Yeah. Um, in Middle High German, troll or trolle, Yes, I guess that's what it's, uh, it's, it's pronounced <laughs> trolle. as. Trolle! 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 <laughs> <laughs> also means fiend. Fiend. So um, it seems like uh, it, in, it, the actual proto-Germanic word is, seems to be unknown. So where right. its source from that point goes mm. further back, they're not really sure. But in Denmark, these creatures uh, are recorded as trolled folk or troll folk. Um, Björger trolled which means mountain troll or Björkfolk, mountain folk. Okay. And in Norway is uh, troll the folk as well. Um, but also one that reminded me of you, which was a Tusa. <laughs> no, excuse me. A Tusa. <laughs> you called me worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I certainly have. <laughs> well, I mean, you do look a bit Norwegian as well. I'd, I've heard that before. Yeah. yeah once yeah, or yeah, twice. It might, be, it might yeah. even be a Norwegian Tusa. I well, yeah. <laughs> I'll take I'm that. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong as well. <laughs> yeah. Make up your own minds. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, in Norwegian tradition, similar tales can be told about uh, larger trolls and the Hulderfolk. So, yeah, there is a distinction made between them. Yeah. The use of the word trowel in Orkney and Shetland, um, it means <laughs> beings which are very much like the Hulderfolk in, um, in Norway. And it may suggest that there is a common origin with the terms. So right, as okay. we know, the Norwegians did actually settle mm. in 
Orkney and the Shetland Islands, which are yes. right up yeah. north of Scotland. Um, the word troll may have actually been used again by the by the Norse pagan settlers as a collective term for supernatural beings that are that they should have been respected and avoided rather than mm. actually worshipped. So that kind of makes sense, really, that just because they're mythical, yeah. not sorry, mythical, but a supernatural being yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be um, paid tribute to or worshipped yeah. or for there to be a shrine or exactly, something. Exactly, yeah. It's but like they exist and we don't really need to pay much attention to them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that was the one thing that surprised me from from kind of reading that is, is the spiritual being element. You know, you always think of them as being a physical form, you know, the big giants, in, you know, and, and just sort of mm. causing havoc. But to actually think of them as a, a spiritual being, that, that, that was the surprising bit mm. for me in the in the origin. Well, that seems to be where it kind of splits off Yeah, um, in, in that sort of time. So probably roughly about a thousand years ago. Right. Probably a little bit over that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Troll later on became more of like the Jotun like sort of creature so mm. more like an ice giant sort of thing right and the holder folk they it became a term for much smaller trolls so i would say it's probably more like um the holder folk would probably be more human sort of looking yeah I and guess, then yeah. troll just as a word by itself would mean these hulking great big yeah exactly yeah ugly which well, interesting ones. we've had um we've had what two pop culture references to the ice giants obviously the ones in Game of Thrones that were the yeah. north of the wall north of the wall <laughs> bastard <laughs> lord bastard <laughs> and then you've got the uh, the ice giants from the the Thor film yeah yeah the actual the, from Jotunheim yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah which are completely different if you compare the two they, they take on completely different completely different forms don't and they? even in so, like the, the the sagas as well the yeah. the Jotun that come from the realm of Jotunheim mm. they are completely different mm. um, and it seems like that with regards to the Norse mythology as well troll um, is a term that's applied to the Jotna mm. and mentioned throughout the Old Norse uh, corpus so in the Old Norse sources trolls are said to dwell within isolated mountains like I said previously and usually as a father and daughter or a mother and son relationship right, so okay. it's quite likely that there is a male and a female in that situation, but one's the parent, yeah. one's the child. Okay. Um, so in the Prose Edda, and I'm going to try and pronounce this correctly, <laughs> uh, is the book um, Skaldska Parma. Okay. Probably pr pronouncing that wrong. But it describes an encounter between an unnamed troll woman and a 9th century skald Braggy Bodison. So according to this section, Braggy was driving... This is driving. This is quite yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. He's probably driving on his horse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, through a certain forest. Again, it doesn't dictate which th forest mm. it is within the Edda. Um, later one evening, and when a troll woman aggressively asked him who he was, and the process went like this. They call me a troll. Moon of the earth, Hrungnir. Wealth sucker of the giant. <laughs> Go on, Gil. She's <laughs> a goblin as well. <laughs> Destroyer of the Storm Sun, beloved follower of the CRS, guardian of the Nafjord, yep. uh, swallower of the Wheel of Heaven or the Sun. Mm. What What's a troll if not that? Um, do you find that? I mean, the, the, Nor the Norse, yeah. they were known for their poetry. Their poetry and their, their and creativity. And but it seems like quite an odd thing to say for someone to like prove their existence well, or they prove their worth isn't it this it's is like the thing like the, you look at me like i'm not a troll but he here's how i'm described yeah it's not that not sound like a troll it's like, I, don't, I don't know you, you tell me like it's it's really really yeah. weird i mean they were very poetic anyway they in, were yeah. in the way that they used their language and the yeah. way that they that they put they put a lot of emphasis on um g in themselves up Bigging themselves yeah, up, that exactly, sort of thing. Yeah. Like, 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 um, and it's really good as well, actually, that in modern times, with another pop culture reference mm. would be um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where you have to um, you have to take part in the act of flighting. So there's a competition, or basically right. a rap battle. A rap battle, okay, but, know, but with insults, I guess. With, oh, massive insults yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Like they, they would go on about you looking like a Tusa. 
or something <laughs> like, or something like that you know yeah um but yeah, it was like uh and it was good to see that that sort of thing is now coming into into the mainstream because so yeah. many people believe that vikings are uh, were like these just hulking horn wearing just bob Barbarians. barbarians yeah just like raped and pillaged and yeah. destroyed everything in their path and i mean they did th that, that as it. well well they but did yeah but, <laughs> but there's more to there's more to them yeah yeah just, they're a gentle folk <laughs> it's a little bit misunderstood yeah. <laughs> but no it's, i mean it's absolutely incredible you know what my, my love for the whole north yeah, culture yeah. thing is and like how much it's shaped our own society and, and mm. our own language and yeah. and everything you know so absolutely, yeah. it, it absolutely fascinates me and I'm, I'm so glad now that we're starting to see a lot more of that coming into Yes, yeah, mainstream it's growing culture. in popularity, isn't it? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like me and Sam, we're going to the Valhalla Festival. Yeah, I saw that in, yeah, in yeah. July. Oh, yeah. I can't wait, mate! It's going to be absolutely <laughs> incredible. That's no, going to be good. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be forging my own blade <laughs> and uh, drinking, drinking from the skull of your enemies. Of mead. <laughs> and I was drinking from the skulls of my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Go get them first. Yeah, exactly. yeah exactly. <laughs> Well, yeah, so moving on. Yes. So we're still staying in Scandinavia and the Scandinavian yeah. folklore. Mm. Now, when I say Scandinavia, I want to include Iceland yeah. as well okay. in particular because it seems like Iceland has held on to these traditions yeah. and this folklore a lot more than what we traditionally know as Scandinavia. Um, so trolls have actually become like defined as a particular type of being now by yeah. this point. So numerous tales are recorded about trolls in which they are frequently described as being extremely old, very strong, but slow and dim-witted, and uh, at times described as man-eaters. Right, okay. Um, so there's a little bit of cannibal in, in them as well, mm. and as um, turning to stone upon contact with sunlight. So that has persisted right the way through. Yeah. However, trolls are also attested as looking very much like human beings. Again, so this yep. has continued right the mm -hmm. way through without any particular hideous appearance about them, but living far away from human habitation and generally having some form of social organisation. Right. Now, I did come across the work of a gentleman called John Lindau, and he's an American uh, philologist, uh, who is a professor emer emeritus of Old Norse and folklore at the University of California, Berkeley. Right. And he states that the etymology of the word troll goes back to old Swedish folklore as nature beings. And as again, as an all-purpose of uh, all-purpose otherworldly beings equivalent, for example, to fairies of Anglo-Celtic traditions. All right, okay. So again, we've yeah. at least... Again, yeah. You know, we're seeing that again, that this blanket statements are going out there. Mm. But as we dive deeper into it, we're starting to see that they are individualized a yeah, little bit yeah. later on down the line. Mm. Um, I'll continue with quoting him. They therefore appear in various migra migratory legends where collective nature beings are called for. So again, as people move, yeah. their culture moves with them, their legends move with them. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Again, that they, they explore that really heavily in that Amazon TV show. American Gods. Right, okay. Really good series. Yeah. It's really worth a watch. Um, so, Lindau also notes that trolls are sometimes swapped out for cats, which I thought was odd. That, yeah, And uh, little people in folklore record. Right, okay. So, again, it's this idea that they're folklore. Uh, that, well, sorry, that they're uh, little people mm. within folklore. Again, much like fairies. Yeah, it's weird. And, and the fae, should I say. Yeah, yeah. So, Scandinavian folklore... Um, believe that lightning frightens away trolls and Jotna. Um and this appears quite often in their their folk tales and such. And this may be uh, in reflection of the the of the god Thor's role in fighting the Jotna right. um, and other such beings. So, in connection, like the the lack of trolls and in, in Jotna in modern Scandinavia is sometimes explained because of the accuracy and efficiency of lightning strikes. Right, so okay. Yeah, yeah, so every time there's a lightning strike, it's taken out a troll, mm. apparently. So, again, I don't know if that's right. really kind of... Interesting. With, it'd be interesting to, to speak to someone from Scandinavia, where, like, yeah. any one of the three countries, and to see whether or not they still 
have those sort of tales. Yeah. Or know, what, like, what, what they were brought up on. Or, yeah, like they see a yeah. thunderstorm when it comes down, see the light going, oh, you've got another. There's a troll. Yeah. You've got another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. It'd be quite interesting to yeah, see if they actually, actually still yeah. have those sort of um, traditions. Yeah, exactly. So additionally to that, mm. the absence of trolls in such regions as Scandinavia is described in folklore as being a consequence of the constant din of the church bells. So this idea that the church bells drive away such beings. Um, the ringing causes the trolls to leave the, for other lands, although not without some resistance. Numerous traditions uh, uh, relate how trolls destroyed a church under construction, right. hold boulders and stones at completed churches. Okay. Now, this is something I found as well. They, in like the Norwegian forest, yeah. there's quite a few where there's just, like, in quite a few locations where there's just a boulder in the middle of the forest. Right. Like it's just appeared mm. there or something like yeah. that, you know, or like it's been there for a very long time, but it's just this round, big boulder, yeah. um, which is really hard to explain. Yeah, like how like it that. got there or because there's nothing else like it in the surrounding area, really. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, I mean, they have a lot of rocky terrain in those yeah, areas. Yeah, of course, yeah. But when you've just got like a single boulder in the middle of a like an evergreen forest or something, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of hard to yeah. explain that. Um. Yeah, so again, they still, even to this day, actually, they still actually, um, there are particular landmarks that they describe as that's a troll. You know, so I, I, right. I ended up watching, um, it looks like it was filmed for BBC Three, and um, this woman goes to Iceland in particular right. to go and find trolls. Mm. And it, it, it kind of, you kind of have to take it with a little pinch of salt because she keeps <laughs> looking back at the camera with this look on her face like, yeah, all right. <laughs> really a like short that. straw coming here <laughs> yeah exactly you know so this guy clearly he's very very enthusiastic this yeah. Icelandic fella and he's going right we're going to go look for trolls on, let's go let's go we've got to go yeah. this way so they go to a certain location and he goes oh no trolls you've got to move on she's like oh okay alright oh deeper in the woods are we yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. so all of a sudden uh, they do this a few times yeah and then they come across um, this particular rock that's um it's got the sun behind it. Right. So it's got like this silhouette and he goes, ah. There she is. There she is. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, 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 there she is. Yeah. There she is. And she's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. Clearly she's been turned to, uh, <laughs> turned into a rock by the sun. <laughs> Just like, 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 yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. That's then. what I would have said. Yeah. I got you, mate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, yeah. if that's the case, don't go troll hunting during the daylight hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go at night. <laughs> There'll be rocks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, which again, that, that whole idea that there are rocks that crops up in mm. Frozen. Yeah, the little troll people. Yeah, the, the, yeah, all yeah. the moss all over them, and yeah, they've got the magic it. and everything else. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I found that it quite does hold up, doesn't it? I suppose mm. in that respect. Yeah, but he also um, compares the trolls um, of Swedish folklore tradition to the Grendel, um, right. which is the uh, Mead Hall invader from yeah. the poem of Beowulf. Um, a, a cracking poem I yeah. love it I absolutely love it and the film ain't half bad either what the, the Ray, Ray Winston Ray Winston Ray, 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 Ray Beowulf you bastard you bastard you bastard but um, and he says this he notes that um, it's just as the poem Beowulf emphasises not harrowing the not the harrowing of um, Grendel but the cleansing of the Hall of Beowulf so in the modern tales stress the moment that when trolls were driven off Mm. So right, okay. It's this idea that when Beowulf, the the or the, the poem of Beowulf came about, is when trolls were driven from the land. It's right, the okay. Right, so it's the, the, the symbol of the right. Okay, yeah. yeah, I get what you mean. Um, smaller trolls are attested as living in burial mounds and in mountains in Scandinavian folklore tradition. Right. There's also a Norwegian research station as well in Antarctica called Troll. Yeah, I know um, very well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you do. Well, I went there on a school trip when when I was younger in uh, back in my days over in Norway, obviously. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, when you was in a little tussa. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Mini mini tussa. Or mini tussa. Called. Yeah. Are hey, you just a big tussa? <laughs> <laughs> well played. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, they, they call it the troll because of all the right. mountains that are stand around the research station, very much looking like trolls. But as, so. but as we know, it's not really a research station is it no it's, it's a guard uh, it's a, post it's a guard post to stop you going beyond 
into the uh, the, the outer the realm. Ice wall. That's it, the ice wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, the ice Called wall the on the flat earth. Flat earthers out there. Yeah, yep. <laughs> we all know this. We all know this. Yep. Stop pretending. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why the government don't just come out and say it. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. Yep. Time so, wasting now. Yeah. But yeah. So that's what I found. I found that to be yeah, good. quite interesting. Really, that you know, there's all this information yeah. out there. I think it's brilliant. I think it's you know we've we've found like with many of the others that we've you know sort of dived into that it's not what it seems. You know, you, you have this idea mostly from pop culture and you know references that you think you know what something is. Mm. Until you actually, you know, kind of look into the origins and the history of it, and you think, oh, actually, this is what it came from, and it's like the whole spiritual being thing. That that was a real surprise yeah. for me to, to to have that, you know, the, the mention of the like werewolf, yeah, you know, the fact that they take on human form and like they can be in, uh, small in stature instead of just like big giants. So again, that ties them in with the fae, the, which you know we had, you know, theories that there were plenty mm. of beings. I will say this actually with regards to the connection with the werewolf thing, yeah, that, which sort of makes sense because there there were tales that I did find that and I forgot to mention it previously but that if you if a human hmm. was to eat human flesh yeah then they could potentially turn into a troll right so it's a cannibalistic idea, thing and the uh, cannibal yeah, sort of thing okay. which I thought was was quite weird because essentially that is what a werewolf is mm. you know it's that idea that if you don't have a righteous path or you mm. uh, fail with your morality yeah then you're going to turn into this hideous creature that you know going to hunger for human yeah. flesh that's well and interestingly that's the first nation's uh belief in the uh the wendigo that's right it is it's the the, the constant craving for human flesh yeah. and uh yeah that's what the, the idea need like to yeah, so if you if you're a person that dies with with uh, a huge amount of greed, mm. then that's it. You're you're destined to run yeah. the forest as this forever hungry, yeah. insatiable, yeah, pretty beast much, thing, yeah. which is fucking terrifying. Terrifying, <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Did you want to plug that in the power wise, just in case? Yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll just it's fully charged when we. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, just to be sure, isn't it? To be sure, to be to, sure. To be sure, we'll check it twice. Check it twice to be sure, to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a just, well, that must have been a little over 35. Yeah. So right, I'll, I'll spot yeah. it. Um, so yeah, um, but, no, but that, that's all, yeah, that, that is all fascinating that, and especially with the links, like we said, to other cryptids, either ones that we've covered or ones that we are yet mm. to cover, but, are, you know, obviously coming up quite soon. So, I, yeah, it, it amazes me this, that it's all this interconnected thing. You know, you think you've got, you know, six or eight individual, you know, cryptids, which, you know, by, you know, attitude or appearance, you mm. know, you could argue, you know, there are, but when you get down to the sort of the crux of it and, you know, and the origins, they all seemingly come from the same same sort of thing or the, you know, the same sort of regions. And we, so they just kind of branch off and they get twisted or changed slightly. And absolutely. It's like yeah. what um, John Lindau said. Yeah. It's like when, with the migratory legends, like, yes. so it seems like these, as people move, they do spread their, their legends. And I, I find that, yeah. I find that fascinating <clears throat> as well. Finding exactly where these things come from. No, it is. And that, and that sort of, that plays quite nicely into the, the sort of the, the encounters that, that I found certainly Excellent. with the, Certainly with the, the traveling um, aspect um, and, you know, uh, cultures and, and stories kind of traveling with, you know, people and not just mm. being um, restricted to where they originated from. Gotcha. And they obviously, you know, traveled, traveled about. Um, and to that end, <laughs> uh -huh. um, I'll go into some of the uh, encounters. Um, and interestingly, I, I didn't really find that many that outside of the kind of folklore stories and, and the sort of the legends of, you know, sort of trolls and, you mm. know, giants and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, no kind of, you know, from like, I don't know, the 1950s and, you know, some Norwegian oh, okay. guy was yeah, up so in the mountains and saw something, you know, I couldn't find anything really. Modern tales. Yeah. It was a lot Good of job. the old, oldie woldy sort of um, ones, much like the one that you pointed out from the, what, the ninth century or whatever. Yeah, the, the, the prosender. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that kind of thing. But interestingly, through doing the uh, 
the research, um, I did come across uh, a number of tales hailing from the US of A. Oh, excellent. Would, uh, would you believe? Um, I suppose for on behalf of uh, us, just to give a little shout out to um, Mysterious Universe. Yes. Uh, org their website um for sharing a, an article which kind of led me down you know this this path um so you know kudos to them for for sharing it i've mentioned it before an excellent podcast yeah good very good podcast and uh yeah yeah the website i'll be honest came in very handy <laughs> yeah and threw up a you know sort of bit of a surprise so um oh okay yeah it, it references um a book um which i'll i'll mention a little later but it's it was by a chap named Jerry Coleman, and he, much like, you know, um, you know, Barker and uh, the, the Mothman guy, whose name is completely... John Keel? That's the one, yeah. <laughs> Barker and the Mothman I, guy. Yeah, just <laughs> complete brain fart. Then I can't like remember. Band, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. Barker and the Mothman guy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, one night only. <laughs> exactly, for one night only, yeah. Um, much like uh, those guys, you know, they, they hear of a phenomenon and they want to dive into it and dedicate all their time to mm. it. And and he, bought, you know, he wrote his book and it was following, I think, around 11 encounters with different people um, across the United States. Um, I, th I think from the 70s or 80s up to the sort of the early, um, early 2000s or, or late. So fairly sort of recent then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the you know, grand scheme of things. this generation, yeah, exactly, yeah, and that was the the, the surprising thing. Um, but I'll, I'll jump into the the first one. Um, this uh, occurred in 1981, uh, and it involved a Gary Durbin of Effingham, Illinois, uh, who was a trucker uh, traveling through a remote stretch of road through the Tyson Mountains in Arkansas. Um, he was just east of Wichita National Forest. Um, carrying a load of livestock uh, to Chicago. Um, now, the drive is described as rather harrowing uh, with hairpin turns and it's descended mostly in complete darkness um, aside from your own headlights. So, that. so it's, yeah. So doing that in a semi-truck. Yeah, bollocks, that was semi so doing it. They call it. Yeah, semi-truck, <laughs> yeah, so doing it anyway. But yeah, um, at one point he passes what looked like a hairy, disheveled looking homeless man with a peg leg uh, standing all forlorn at the corner of one of these uh, treacherous turns. Um, now, Durbin at the time sort of paid it no mind and just thought it was a man who really wanted to get hit by a car because of where he was, where he was standing at that time of the day. Yeah. So he just thought, wow, you know, idiot, and, and kind of drove on. Um, this wouldn't, however, be the last time um, that Gary would see the stranger. Um, he made it to a truck stop a little further down the road uh, and stopped for a, a coffee or whatever. Um, he sets off again along the I-55 and makes it over the border into Missouri. Here he stops at a, another rest area. As he pulls out of that area, he claims to have seen the old hairy man with a peg leg again, uh, this time standing on the opposite side of the road, um, just just staring at him, or at least staring in, in his uh, his direction. Creep. Exactly, yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the sighting sent a, a shiver through uh, Durbin, and so, and so to calm himself down, he basically reasoned that the stranger must have hitched a ride to enable him to get so far ahead because um, it, it wouldn't have happened on foot, yeah, basically. Um, so that's how he kind of rationalised the, the whole sort of situation. Certainly on one foot. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, one good foot. <laughs> um, so Gary Durbin would see the stranger a total of five times over the years um, in Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, and Florida. Um, and this was wow. the... So okay. gone. Yeah, yeah. They're thinking about the locations. It's a all, fairly man. wide spread. I mean, especially Florida is completely what, nowhere near the others. I mean, at least the others the are going to be relatively. Well, I mean, well, relatively I close. Sort of following America, a, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, now he gave a description um, of the stranger, a little bit more kind of in depth, um, and he says he stood at six foot five. The peg leg started just below the knee. He had very long hair, a beard. Uh, both light brown in colour, old-fashioned clothes that were ripped and torn, uh, and he carried what Gary called a little hobo pouch. 
with him. A hobo bag. No idea what that is. I presume it's some sort of like fanny pack or bum bag made out of leather or something. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of a hobo pouch. pouch. I'm yeah. going to have to Google that later. Yeah, I wish I had. I, I think well, I might have done, but... I might not actually hobo pouch. It doesn't... Well, yeah. I mean, maybe go incognito or something. or Definitely your incognito. Yeah. Do it on one of the boys' do, uh, search history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's borrow your phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. What for? Searching up hobo pouches. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. You, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll find, yeah. yeah, you'll figure it out. <laughs> um... So yes, that was the, the the first one, which um, I think starts us off on on a pretty good uh, yeah. path with with these. Um, the the next one, it's, funny, it's one of those on. ones where it's, sorry, it, it, yeah, it's on. one of those ones where it's, they're appearing human like attention. Yeah, so it draws back to that initial the uh, origin. Hold, hold the fuck. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it was it's normally around you know wooded areas, you know mountainous areas, you know along these you know. I roads or motorways, I guess they are, um, yeah. as over here. Um, so yeah, and we'll, we'll find out through, you know, all of the encounters that I'll go through that they are all seen in the same sort of areas. So there's that consistency. Uh, what the it. same being sort of thing. I don't necessarily know if it's the same, if it's the same stranger or, or creature, but in, in terms of, um, not location, but, uh, like surroundings. So it'll be dark. It'll be wooded. A lot, oh, lot, lot of greenery. Environmental. Yeah, sort of elements, environmental. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it could well be this. I mean, if it is more along the spiritual side and it, it takes a more human form when it presents itself, then, yeah, I guess it could be the same same being. I mean, the, the descriptions certainly stack up to mm. suggest that. But, yeah, when, you, when you've only got one good leg and this is travelling between states quite quickly, <laughs> it, it does oh, sort of beg a belief, but... Yeah. Maybe not a skip, maybe not a jump. Well, exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, now, the, the next one that I found uh, occurred a couple of years later, 1983, um, involves a woman known only as Barb uh, from De Plain, Illinois, um, who had a frightening encounter with a seemingly unknown creature. Uh, Barb went on a road trip to visit her sister in Alabama and she got there with that incident and that's the story. Oh, right. No, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, it's, it's, a short, right yeah, it's a short one. Um, <laughs> now, upon meeting her sister, the two went to uh, a local mall or certainly that was their plan. Uh, it was located on the I-20 and I-59 by Green Pond in Alabama, if that means anything to our uh, American listeners. Okay. Um, on their way, they passed a wild-looking man by the side of the road. He was six feet in height, uh, with very long hair, with clothes that looked like they'd been dragged by a car, uh, which is quite specific. Mm. Um, the stranger also had a wooden peg leg. Now, shaken by the encounter, the two sisters changed their plans and instead went to a local coffee shop to compose themselves. Barb later described the feeling of seeing the stranger as less evil and more of a warning. Mm. She felt the appearance was uh, warning them of a, a tragedy that had either happened or was was going to happen. That's interesting. Yeah, which is, kind of ties back to um, sort of the, the Mothman. Yeah, the whole and harbinger sort of, of yeah. something going wrong or even... Yeah. A warning like a, or like cause or something yeah, like that. Yeah, banshee no, as well. No screaming, no crying or anything yeah. like that. But much along those really lines. Appearance. And again, all, all a collective um, sort of creature, aren't they? You, mm. you know, from what we're finding. Um, but later that evening, um, having returned hours earlier than originally planned, uh, Barb's sister received a call telling her that her son had fallen from a tree and uh, badly broke his arm. And... They were able to, off the back of that, they were obviously able to go and, you know, collect her son and take him straight to the uh, the ER. Yeah, to, of course, because in 83, there, there wouldn't have been mobile phones or anything. No, no, like nothing that. So like they that. would have had to so, be at the phone. Yeah, ready to answer it. And if they wow. had stuck to their original plan and gone to the mall, the chances are they still would have been there when the, the call was, was coming into her home. So I think it may well have been in, in hindsight, but... Barb certainly looks back at it as a as a warning, and as though they were supposed to return home at that time, you know, to receive that call yeah. to take the son to, you know, the the ER uh, or hospital, whatever. Um, 
And because apparently the injury could have been a lot worse had they not tended to him, you know, kind of when they also did. Also, it must have been a big, big so break. So it was a big then. break. Yeah, I think in the book it details that it was like two or like two or three separate breaks in the one arm or something. And if it had been left any longer, it could have caused, you know, I don't know about amputation or well, whatever, but it certainly would have caused issues must with have been healing. Like a compound and, fracture that where it, it, you know, it comes out. Yeah, quite. Yeah, I don't remember that detail, but yeah, quite possibly that's oh, certainly well, what they alluded severe, to anyway. Then, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it's quite a, a big. So I think that's why she she sort of calls back to it being more of a you know kind of a warning because they they didn't necessarily feel you know sort of scared or that it was an evil presence, but uh, and enough to change them. their plans. Yeah, but not that's weird. So yeah, but so, so that, that, I quite like that element. Again, that kind of claws back to maybe the spiritual side of of these beings and and that kind of enforcing that kind of feeling mm. that you know you need to change your plans you need to you know something's happened or whatever so yeah i quite um yeah i quite like that one uh a, a short uh a sort slightly shorter one um this was a little bit more recent in the uh, winter of 98 uh, a trucker who called himself gunslinger <laughs> and that's the only name that he gives <laughs> so which is great um what i think they, we should all he, do that he gave him so I, I think the way it's it's written i think he is a self-proclaimed nickname yeah um, <laughs> I suppose truckers don't have many friends, do they? Well, this is it, so. yeah. So I suppose they have to give themselves nicknames, I guess. Love um, it. But uh, yeah, he, he was headed for Chicago, Illinois, along the I-255. He was about 12 to 14 miles from Alton, Illinois, when he saw a large, unkept hairy man uh, in worn-out clothes hobbling along the side of the road. Um, so what was the appearance of the stranger in uh, this particular location that he slowed down his truck um he slowed down enough to sort of pull up alongside the the, the stranger got a full look at him and uh and bolted he thought nope <laughs> oh a straight up no he did, yeah it was a straight up no and he yeah he, he sped up carried on going and you know sort of didn't look back but it, there was enough of this guy's appearance that made old gunslinger um you know poo his <laughs> pants and uh and well, high it, guy then, eh? exactly yeah and slinger high tail it out of there um and yeah he, he, he apparently he was sort of shocked shell shocked by the you know the kind That's of the uh, encounter well. and it affected his you know sort of driving you know for sort of the you know the years to come whenever he drove either down that same route or a similar route you know he'd always be sort of looking at the side of the road for a you know, kind mm. of an individual or, or something. So it, it had quite a This is something that, that's cropped impact. up a lot, isn't it? Where people have interacted with something or not even interacted, just seen yeah. something and it's made them feel weird. Just the sight of it. Nothing's happened. No. But just the just sight of it. Just enough of it, yeah. Is it's, enough to send them, give them the willies. And yeah, like, go, exactly. Oh, that's, that's, I'm going the other way. Nope. <laughs> yeah, straight <laughs> yeah. up. No, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's weird. Yeah, very weird. But um, he, he gives also quite a um, compelling description uh, basically said that the stranger was between six and seven feet tall, long hair, a beard, a wooden peg leg, peg leg and uh, torn clothes. So uh, there's the peg a, leg again. Yeah. So aside from the others that are pretty on the nose, that's the one specific that seems to be, uh, you know, and it's spanning over, up over in, times in all of them. as well, isn't it? So, th so the first one must have been in like the, the late 70s. Uh, uh, with uh, early the trucker. So they're all. So the first two were early eighties, and 80s. then this one was ninety eight. So, well, there's a bit of time yeah. span in that. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, this is only three out of the eleven or twelve encounters that, um, that feature this. this that Coleman, being. yeah, that, that, that Coleman sort of um, puts in his in his book. But it's they're funny. all of the same being, um, but obviously different different locations around sort See, of Middle it's America. Not, it's not like what you'd expect. Like again, I've still got this image in my head of like. Like traditional sort of troll, yeah, sort of Billy Goat's Gruff, sort of, yeah, mountain trolls that yeah, live like, under bridges yeah, and like something out of Skyrim or something like that, you know, what I mean? yeah, exactly, yeah, or, yeah, World that's of Warcraft, what, that that's kind what of thing in my head, but yeah, that sounds yeah. more just like a, a weird old man, doesn't it? Yeah, really, really. yeah, but it's this idea, just that, a hobo, basically, yeah, just a, a would like like traveler, would like, well, he's got it, a that. pouch for it, so he's got a pouch, yeah, yeah absolutely, pouch, so he must be a hobo, exactly, exactly, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, a, it's this idea that people get this weird feeling when they look at it. It's weird. well, yeah, it's, it's weird. But uh, after all of the encounters and meeting with these various people, um, Jerry Coleman actually, I think it's in the book, surmises that the sightings were of a mystical being that served as a protector or omen 
of possible bad fortune. Um, and it's actually um, part of a, what I think he might have coined a road troll phenomenon. In road uh, it, troll, yeah, road troll phenomena in in Middle America, and I, 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 that's interesting. I think he's credited for you know sort of coining that. I, I, I could be wrong, but um, that's where I first sort of heard it oh. in, in in his book. And he says that the the appearance of the road troll may be a, a benevolent occurrence somehow. Uh, subverting some accident that would have otherwise occurred. That's interesting. And that's his kind of summation after talking to these sort of, you know, a that's dozen people. That's incredible that 11 different people on several different occasions. Yeah. I've seen the same I've seen the guy, same thing. Same thing, same creature. Got the yeah. same feelings as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's very odd. And I, you know, that's why I quite liked it because it wasn't where I expected to go. I expected to be, you know, in the mountains of... Scandinavia somewhere like, like, like Sweden sort of or thing, yeah exactly here, here yeah. like breathing yeah exactly like yeah oh, you know weird. someone living in a cabin in the mountains in in like Sweden or something or you know in Iceland mm. or whatever and they yeah hear banging on their wall or hear like a, a noise which is, or which is a Bigfoot sort of thing yeah exactly. so maybe even like that that phenomena that that description that mm. people get in those Bigfoot stories yeah it's taken over from troll stories Quite possibly, or yeah, or I think one has sort of bled into the other, or, or vice versa. You know, I, I don't. Or the I'm big not, man's a troll. Or the big man is a troll. Yeah. Um, which and it's you know, funny you mentioned that because I do actually have a, a story about that, or sort of certainly along those lines, oh, yeah. which uh, which may or may not take us back to uh, good old West Virginia. Oh, Mountain Mama. <laughs> Excellent. Mama. Absolutely. But um, yeah, I've got a. Uh, Got quite an interesting one to, to sort of go through uh, before we get to that. Like I say, it's been a while since we've been in West Virginia, it's, isn't it? It's, it's been, been a quite while. Quite a few episodes. It has, and I, I won't I won't lie. I did deliberately Google <laughs> trolls in West Virginia <laughs> in the hope that something <laughs> would come up. And uh, yeah, in that respect, I struck gold. Excellent. It, it's yeah. You'll, Let's go, baby. You'll like it. You'll like it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just a teaser for now because I'm going to go through uh, through another one, um, which which kind of harpers back to a couple of the references that you mentioned earlier um you know in, in particular the, the small stature um and the the frozen reference um, okay in terms of like the sort of the numbers and, and whatnot um but this uh, this occurred <clears throat> a little little while ago now 1919 in barron county wisconsin um and involved a young lad named uh, harry anderson um now, Harry and his family um, were going out for a drive in their new family car, which is a Model T Ford. Um, it was a uh, relaxing summer evening, and the family didn't have a destination in mind. They just wanted to travel the back roads and were seemingly happy in uh, in each other's company, as goes his encounter. <laughs> Sounds fucking horrendous to me, to That's, be honest. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to each their own. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> they, are, they are driving until at least 10 p.m. at night, and the father decides to turn around and, and start driving home. On the way back to their home, the car started to encounter problems. Um, the car comes to a complete stop in complete darkness in the middle of Highway 25. Um, they determined that the car needed oil, so Harry's dad sent him up the road to find a farmer who would be willing to spare some oil. Well, they weren't calling out the AA or, or AAA. No, they nothing. Call it out there. No, nothing like that. And uh, it's yeah, it's quite quite interesting. That, you know, you're in the arse of nowhere, pitch black, and you send. I mean, the, the, his age at the time varied between I think twelve, fifteen, and nineteen. But either way, he was a young lad. What do you mean, like? Well, because it was pitch black, you're in the middle of nowhere and your dad sends you off into the unknown with a jerry yeah, no, can. No, to, I mean, no I mean, yeah, I get that. The, the ages. <laughs> yeah, so in his story, I think he, he says he was around 12. But then there's another article where they're talking to him and I think he's 19 at the time of giving of, of talking to this article. And then the, I can't remember where, but there was a reference somewhere that he was about 15, 16. So it's quite a, a varied, wow, okay. That's odd. varied age, but I think in his own encounter, I think he, I think he says he was around twelve, thirteen. I think, if I remember rightly. So, but he says a young guy. Mm. Either way, but, but yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's odd. Right, go on, boy. Go on, off, yeah, off you pop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> best of luck. <laughs> yeah. Come back when you when you <laughs> yeah. got the oil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's pretty much Don't it. Don't return until exactly. Um, after a, a fair trek down this road, Harry does come to a, a farmhouse off in the distance. 
he cuts across the farmer's field. He approaches the house, and he, you know he, he gets the uh, gets the oil. Um, now, obviously, there was obviously a lot more to that part of the story, but for our purposes, we didn't need to know Very that. Interesting but time. He basically finds a farmer, gets the oil, starts heading back as a chinwag. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Harry gets back to Highway Twenty Five and heads back towards the the car. Now, off in the distance, he spots an odd uh, figure moving towards him. Now, he drops the oil can and strains his eyes in that direction to try and see what it is. Now, from out of the darkness and moving directly towards him was what he described as 20 strange-looking little men. Uh, Panicked, he jumped off the road and hid behind a tree. Uh, Whilst these unusual creatures made their way uh, past him without knowing that he was there, so he managed to sort of get out of sight, seemingly. Um, now, they all walked in single file and were described as bald, small, uh, sorry, bald, small as a child, uh, with torn, dishevelled clothing held up by braces, which is oddly specific. Very specific. Yeah. Are they singing by any chance? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Funnily enough... They were. <laughs> yeah. You joke. Oh, really? And I had the same thought. Um, now, they were singing. It wasn't... It wasn't... Oh, oh. No, okay. Good job. But, um, oh, I just wish we'll think it. I mean, not far off it, but uh, it wasn't um, off to work they were going. Oh, but, right. So, as the little trolls um, marched on, they broke into song simultaneously, and it went a little something like this. <coughs> Me 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 me. Um, we <laughs> get on with it, man. Get on with it. Put your teeth in. Uh, right. So it went like this: We won't stop fighting till the end of the war. In nineteen hundred and ninety-four, sound off one two, sound off three four, detail one two three four, one two three four. <clears throat> Were, Which, they, were they fronted by Sergeant Gunnery Hartman? Yeah, well, I did think, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> I was expecting them to say, yeah, they had sort of drill sergeant in, ahead of them, yeah. War? Yeah, in 1994. So the war is going to end in 94? Yeah, 100 odd, uh, 80 odd years after the yeah. encounter. 1919. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. Which, yeah. What war is that then? I, I, well, I don't know. I, I think it would probably hop it back to that great... Uh, crane oh. and uh, pygmy war. It's got to be the trolls had the, the trolls, trolls had a go, well. didn't they? Yeah, the Battle of the Five Armies. <laughs> <laughs> the pygmies, the trolls. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it occurred, Peter Jackson had it all wrong. <laughs> it occurred at the Lonely Mountain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, and it, yeah. So, the, but the thing is, that it sounds like there's sound off and all of that. That's, that's marine. That's military, isn't it? That's yeah, marine like marines. Sort of thing. Yeah. I don't know, but I've been told. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, blimey. Yeah, right. very, so, yeah very odd. And I guess 1919, what's that? What's That's after the I don't breakout know. of First World War. So maybe that type of military I don't um, know. I mean, sort of marching would have been that, seen quite often, well, I guess. the thing is, whenever I, whenever I hear that sort of marching songs, it always reminds me of like, the Vietnam for films that I've seen. Vietnam, yeah, exactly. What I was going to say, you know, it takes and, me back to like anything um, after that. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, Vietnam. Yeah. And uh, like, yeah, that's odd. Yeah, that's which is obviously know. far, which is a long time after this encounter. A hell of a, yeah, yeah. at least 50 years at the very yeah. point. Um, yeah. Yeah, about yeah, 40, 40, 40 50 odd years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is weird. I don't know enough about American military history no, to, I don't. to know when the Marines were formed. No, I don't. So, but no, it was oddly specific in its wording. Um, and it, it, I could only sort of surmise that maybe, you know, training camps or something around Wisconsin, mm-hmm. soldiers would march through, you know, the, you know, the towns or the mountains, chanting them sort of songs, and that's what maybe influenced him in his story. Assuming it's not true, of course. Yeah. Um, but uh, so they, they continued their march uh, past um, Harry behind the tree uh, until they disappeared um, into the darkness, uh, approaching another tree line uh, that was a bit sort of further ahead. Uh, the song eventually finished before they fully disappeared and they returned to a quiet chatter amongst themselves, mm. which uh, in itself was quite, um, yeah, was, was quite 
interesting. Yeah, the whole thing about the war ending in '94. <clears throat> yeah. that's, that's strange. Yeah, very bizarre. Um, and you know, again, a specific year, um, yeah. which I, which I quite like. I, I quite like. Yeah, it's a sort of bit of realism or you know a bit of credence for yeah, me maybe that they, they like picked the, maybe they got the Mayan calendar or something like that yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah absolutely um, now obviously the story does continue far beyond that but for the purposes of what we needed to discuss I didn't yeah, obviously didn't want to go through it yeah. but basically Harry returns to the car after this encounter gives his dad the oil can and they get their car moving on the journey back home um, he tells his dad of the encounter but none of his family saw or heard these twenty oh, course, little yeah, men, they were coming but from they would have where come. Was going. Yeah, they would have come from that direction. So, yeah, just interesting that none of the family um, Let's bring saw it, back it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I see twenty odd trolls yeah. singing as they went by. Did you? Yeah, you'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're going straight to bed. <laughs> or maybe they were cloaking. Or maybe they were cloaking, which we've uh, yeah which established we've, that established, some established of these they sort can of do possibly the could do. Yeah, um, but one thing I thought was worth mentioning, which again, like I said at the start, sort of ties into what you mentioned about, you know, cultures traveling and, you know, bringing their stories and, and mm. folklores and that with them. Um, the early uh, German, Icelandic and Norwegian immigrants first settled in Wisconsin. Um, so wow. it's quite possible that they would have brought their story stories of, you know, trolls with them. And then it in itself embedded within, you know, Wisconsin, you know, sort of folklore, yeah. which could have quite easily obviously manifested itself into its own legend within that part of the world, or we certainly gave evidence Which to, is something that we've discussed before with regards to the the idea of the Tolpa, the, yes, the thought yeah. form. Yeah. Um so it's almost like does the is it the phenomena that is uh, manifesting as these trolls, is it is it manifesting as a result of the legends and the stories that come from the cultures of the people, mm. or is it the other way around? Are the, yeah. are the legends and the cultures generated <clears throat> because of these beings? Exactly, yeah. It's weird. Like, which one actually yeah. comes first? Like, I can understand like this uh, the idea that the the migratory legends mm. and such they bring their legends, but do they then yeah. also bring the entities with them as well? Well, that's the thing. Is it yeah? Is it the written word and is it the the spoken story that they bring, or yeah, as you rightly say, do they somehow transfer the actual entity itself, which then embeds into this new? And is that why some of these take on different forms, you know, different representations because they change based on the surrounding area, the culture, yeah. the I don't know part of the world, the I don't know, particular religion that it might have been attached to, you know. So yeah, there could be all these. There's a lot of similarities with because mm. um, in my research, I did find similarities with other. Beings and other creatures from different parts of the world. Yeah, exactly. Well, like banshee, goblin, fairy. Yeah, you know, they've all got similarities between them. But more so to do with um, the similarities of trolls and other beings from yeah. from across the world. But only this is the weird part. Only in the northern hemisphere. The yes, southern yeah, hemisphere. What you're yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't find yeah, anything nothing. in the southern hemisphere that no. matched the the description of these sort of things. Yeah. Um, not really, no. Not that I could find anyway. I mean, yeah, nothing. And you'd imagine if, you know, if anywhere, Scotland would probably, with, you know, the vast mountain ranges and yeah. wilderness and whatever, that if, if there was going to be anything, it well, would be that be part of the world. The you know, especially as you um, referenced earlier. The Orkney that they, and, yeah, and the Shetland exactly, Islands. Yeah, yeah you're right. The northernmost part. So you would have thought it would have travelled, you know, south from there. But seemingly it doesn't. Seem to unless as I, as I was saying that that they did transfer their 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 folklores and their legends, mm. and as they travelled you know further down, it eventually came to what we know as the banshee and the goblins and the potentially. Fae I and, mean, well, I know, you know that did it historically um, in in Scotland when when the Norwegians and what well, the, the Scandinavians mm. came here, the, the north of the border. Mm. It was very difficult for them to actually conquer. Yeah, because right. at the time it was it was populated by um, a, a group of people known as the the Picts, right? And they were very much resistant to yeah anything coming in. So even though the the, the Scandinavians took over a large swathe of of England mm. specifically, yeah, and um, and coming in into Ireland as well, Scotland yeah. for them it seems was held off know, a bit longer. Yeah, well, a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. like that the, the, they didn't get a chance, yeah. sort of thing. Mm. Um, 
So that potentially just, might be where yeah, that block possibly. comes from. That's why it's stopped. Yeah, yeah. The, the Scottish didn't surrender, sort of thing. Yeah, they yeah, had exactly. their freedom. They did. They did have their freedom. <laughs> <laughs> they did absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the, the next one, um, the, the next one that I wanted to go into was you know as I promised uh, earlier. Yes. Um, a, Wearing. A very specific T-shirt for this story as well. Absolutely, yeah. Because we, we do, do heart, love West Virginia. Which, absolutely. Um, Find it in the merch store, guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Details will follow later. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and and th but this is actually again, you know, much like everything in in West Virginia, it is its own phenomena, um, mm. known as the Grafton Monster or Grafton Monster. This popped up actually the other day on one of my crypto. Pages oh, really? that, I, that I follow on Facebook. Right. Yeah. Okay. And he came up with like the region and like, you know, we got like the the, the map with the yeah. numbers. And oh, okay. down in the bottom corner, it tells you what yeah. it is. And number 19 was the Grafton Monster. Right. No yeah. way. Yeah. There you go. That's weird. Yeah. Um, now, this is uh, described as a cross between Bigfoot and a troll. Um, it is a hairless, skulking, upright humanoid. So basically, a shaved Bigfoot. <laughs> Not a shaved monkey. Not a shaved monkey this time, a shaved Bigfoot. <laughs> a waxed Sasquatch. Oh. <laughs> That's it, I love it. Waxed Sasquatch. Yeah, exactly. Um, Brilliant. It fears, it fears loud noises <laughs> and it eats only meat. Uh, and of course, its, uh, its base or its origin is um, Grafton, West Virginia. So we're, we're back there, baby. <laughs> oh, mate. Love it. <laughs> you got it, haven't you? Yeah. Um, now with Wax Sasquatch. <laughs> I love it. Um, now, with this, uh, with this uh, sort of creature, they are both males and females uh, of the uh, of the species, um, ranging from 600 pounds at their lightest to around 800 or 900 pounds at their heaviest. Um, now, sorry, ladies, but it is believed that the female uh, Grafton monster is heavier than the male. Oh getting up to about 900 pounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, big girl. Was the, yeah, exactly, yeah, big girl. And uh, whereas the men only get to about 800, so not far off, oh, not but far, yeah. yeah. Well, it happens a couple of times. You know, it, it happens, happens to the best in, of us, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the human, <laughs> Absolutely. human nature and also the animal kingdom as well. Exactly, so. right. Don't feel too disheartened. It's just nature. It's just nature. It um, now, they're muscular and lean in the spring and podgier in the winter. Much, no, like no, us. Uh, much like me, yeah, I know yeah, all about that. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting my winter coat as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, now they can also um, range anywhere between six and nine feet tall. Uh, they live in uh, in uh, dense woodland around Grafton, um, but have been known to nest as far as Michigan. That's quite yeah, which that's is quite far, again, really, it's quite a it? distance. I mean, my my geography is bad at the best of times, but I'm pretty sure that they're not that close to one another. <laughs> no. Like no, they are they're really, quiet. There's there's a few state lines in between them. That's yeah, for sure. A fair few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's in, yeah. But again, it's that whole region there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. The Appalachians and you know, yeah, all of that mammoth cave system. Mammoth cave system. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and all that uh, quartz under the ground. Yes, yeah. those quartz deposits, mate. <laughs> yeah, watch out for them. Absolutely. Um, now there was a a sort of a fairly brief sighting. Um, which I thought just to, you know, add a bit of uh, variety I'd, I'd go through. Mm -hmm. um, it occurred at uh, 11 p.m. on June 16th, 1965. So right in the heart of that blip yeah, in all the West Virginia with going Men on. in Black and Mothman and yeah. everything else. So, yeah, right in the, the heart Flatwoods of it. And Flatwoods, Flatwoods, and Flatwoods as well, as well yeah, yeah. Flatwoods as well, yeah. Um, and this involved a chap named uh, Robert Cockrell, um, a young reporter for the Grafton Sentinel. Mm. Uh, he was heading home on Riverside Drive uh, and in a hurry, he was speeding down the dark winding roads. Suddenly, his headlights illuminate a huge white creature on the right-hand side of the road, um, standing on a cleared off section of grass. It was around seven feet tall, hairless, and had pale, shiny skin uh, or silvery skin. Um, Showing no fear, it stayed motionless as it stared at him as he made the approach and, you know, eventually sort of drove past. He drove home uh, even faster and told two friends of the encounter. They all returned to the site not long after and searched for over an hour. And all they could find was basically trampled grass 
around around that area. So to sort oh, so of like physical evidence. Yeah, physical evidence that, that something, something had there. been there. Yeah. Um, as they were leaving, though, all they they all heard a um, low, eerie whistling sound that seemed to follow them on their search, Ooh. and that apparently took them from the sort of the edge of the road across the uh, the sort of the clearing where the the creature was seen, and then mm. down to uh, like a um, like a little river bank or like a, a stream, gotcha. and then they walked along the stream, sort of away from where they'd sort of pulled up. So it was all, along all that point. They heard just this really low, eerie kind of Whistle. whistling that, that kind of mm. like followed them. That's weird. Which is yeah, which is, which is weird. Yeah. Um, now, yeah. So they they heard yeah followed them on their, their search. Um, he was reluctant to tell his story because of his profession and also because of the I guess the outrageousness of of what they'd seen. Yeah. Um, but two days later, he appeared in an article. Uh, and was published in the local newspaper. Now, whether that was his paper or whether it was another one, I don't know. But it, it basically sparked a monster hunt uh, that was about 100 people strong. And it was like how you see in the old films and the cartoons. They were all had pitchforks torches and, and pitchforks. torches and all of that. Yeah, all, yeah. yeah. Honestly, it was. That's how it was described oh, anyway. Um, that went on, I think, over an evening um, so that until the following day. Um, and then a few days after that, there was another article in the same paper that basically said it was all just a hoax. So it was all a fuss over nothing, gotcha. as you'd expect. As they always do. As they, you'd expect yeah. when they uh, when they cover it up. <laughs> um, the one too many times, guys. One exactly. Too many times. Absolutely. So yeah. So that was uh, yeah. So that was that one. So no um, no real sort of scary encounter per se. But uh, I guess what happened when they went to that site was um, pretty unsettling. With yeah, like the whistling that. And it, like I said, oh, as they say, it tended to follow, you know, follow them, them well. on their search until they returned, assumingly, to their car. Well, it so, could have been could have been a shaped Bigfoot. It could have been or a waxed Sasquatch. <laughs> it could have been an emulated Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of Imac on a Yeti. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, who knows? The you possibilities know. are oh, endless. They really are yeah. endless. <laughs> <laughs> but we will leave it there. That's for sure. That we will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that we will. Um, yeah, that's interesting though. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that, that kind of sounds more like the the idea of like the 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 the, bit, the trolls from Skyrim. That's yes, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anyone that has played it, they kind of get yeah. the idea of it. It's like a bit more of like an ape sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, humanoid, an upright humanoid. Yeah, yeah. but this one, yeah, seemingly was was hairless and about seven foot tall so you know pretty much like, I mean, we joke but you know you imagine taking a big foot yeah and shaving it and you've got the grafton monster <laughs> could be a mangy woodwose <laughs> it could be a mangy woodwose yeah <laughs> it could be it could be a plucked woodwose well at least woodwose. <laughs> well at least it wasn't an owl exactly thank, that, God, you know, yeah, thank, thank goodness, goodness for wasn't that an owl. Yeah. dear oh lord yeah um but, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they do. Funny <laughs> enough, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, you yeah, know that's me and the uh, the sightings and uh, that's encounters pretty cool. and yeah, that's some just, good ones there. Eh? Yeah, they were good. I thought what surprised me and what I quite liked is that it did take me away from what I thought was going to be the obvious, mm. as I said earlier. And you know, we end up back in you know the US of A and uh, our beloved uh, West Virginia. Um, and yes, uh, yeah, no, I, th I thought they were they were good. They were certainly more compelling than the. Than the other, because it all just would have been like the poems or the you know the mm. folklores of you know of, of Scandinavia, which all much of a muchness. But I, I, I couldn't really see anything outside of that. Um, not saying that they don't exist, but no, they they didn't certainly they didn't come to the forefront. These were the ones that kind of captured my attention really. So I thought That's I'd cool. uh, yeah, I thought I'd uh, thought I'd bring them. But yeah, have you got anything that you want to cover? Yeah, I guess Before so. Actually, go, yeah, or? yeah, I did actually. Yeah, because yeah. because I, I did mention previously about finding similar sort of legends. That's right. That it's more so based on the um, like the morality side mm. of things and and the potential of cannibalism okay, and yeah, being turned yeah. into mm. something. So, um, and again, it was was all in like the the northern hemisphere. Um, the one that I found that was fairly similar was um, I found one in Russia that the Leshy. Which was right. something that we brought up yeah, in our first episode that. with yeah, the big the man. Bigfoot one, yeah, yeah. Um, mostly abducts humans, mainly children, and has been known to eat them yep. as well. Um, 
The other one that I found was a Kitsune that was um, a legend from Japan. Um, it also shares one from Korea, which is the Kumio, and the one in Chinese as well, which is the Huli Jin. I'm probably right. pronouncing that one. Quite possibly. Yep. So in, in <laughs> Korea and Japan, uh, Kumio or Kitsune um, uses a marble carried in its mouth to steal wisdom from humans. Which is odd. Okay. It's probably yeah. some sort of Probably something lost in translation there, I think. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, but usually through a kiss. Now, this is where it gets right, okay, weird, yeah. right? So this is the... the I mean, concept. we've all kissed some trolls in our lifetime, haven't we? Oh, <laughs> at the end of the night. <laughs> when the lights come when on. When the lights come on. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was like uh, Paul Whitehouse, isn't it? Sorry, girls. No monsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, off you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kevin and Perry. Yeah. Kevin and Perry. Hello, ladios. Hello, ladios. <laughs> Keep the change. Um, yeah, so the idea, it's the idea of the fox spirit. Yes. Um, is it can take human form at the age of 100 years. Right. Um, and it can take, the, uh, it usually takes human shape of a female as well. Right, so okay. It, it, however, the fox spirit requires the use of a human skull to take uh, that it places on its head in order to transform into a human, and it's also known to devour the human in order to take its shape as well. Right. Okay. Which is weird, um, but it's also uh, the victim of the fox spirit can also become a fox spirit as well. Right. Okay. So it's this idea that yeah, almost like you a, are what you eat. Pretty much. <laughs> well, certainly in the fox spirit yeah. case here, it yeah. really is. You've got to be careful who you eat. Yeah, exactly. That's for yeah. sure. Um, but staying in Japan, I found another one. Yeah. It was the Yamauba or Yam Yamuaba. Yamauba. Right, okay. Yamauba. Yeah. Um, they're generally considered to be an old woman that has been marginalised by society and forced yeah. out into the mountains, which is a story Again, we've heard. Yeah, we've heard that before. Quite yeah. often. Um, but she does have a penchant for eating human flesh. Which is probably why she got kicked out and sent to the forest. <laughs> it's a very good move by the society. <laughs> really. So among many tales, uh, yeah. there is one of uh, a Yamauba um, who offers shelter to a young woman about to give birth. Right. Um, while secretly planning to eat her baby. Mm -hmm. And in another, she's actually looking to eat her as well. But there's also a um, story where she goes into a village, um, goes into their homes eats the children whilst their mothers are away. Okay. And it's said that um, those that see the Yamuba are also destined, and that are, they see it, but they survive. Right. They're destined to become a Yamuba. Right. I'm probably saying that word wrong. It doesn't sound right. But, right. <laughs> um, but what's also really weird is um, they have mouths underneath their hair. So they have long so hidden in hair. Right, okay. So they're hidden underneath her hair. So is it just that, that their face is is hidden? Well, in or the depictions on the that back I got, of their just, head. Okay, or on, the, on the back of their hidden head. Hidden under their head um, somewhere. The scalp. I right, know, okay. Maybe, I don't know. It's, it's very odd. Yeah. Well, I mean, only because, just harping back to the, the road uh, troll um, With phenomena, the hair over its face. The, the long hair was typically over its face, presumably to, to sort of protect its... Uh, you know, identity or to, you know, sort of shield its its actual form. So when yeah. you say under the hair, does it just yeah, simply weird, mean that? It? Or could it actually be, as you I say, like over, their, actually, yeah. over their, their skull or scalp? Very odd. But yeah. I also want, I also came across the one you mentioned earlier, the Wendigo. Ah, yes. So it's the idea yeah, yeah. that, you know, you can um, become a Wendigo through a lack of morality. Yes. Um, so it's specifically greed and mm. also eating yeah. human flesh. So yeah. if you, you know, because it's the idea where the Wendigo comes from. It comes from these very, very harsh environments where yeah. you've got to suffer these awfully long winters yeah. and awfully harsh winters yeah. that if you succumb to immorality mm. and eat human flesh, you're yeah. destined you're to You're destined to walk the earth become, forever eating it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, was a bit weird. Quite harrowing, but really. Yeah. These sort of stories, though, of yeah. there being a woodland creature or mm. entity or something mm. like this that devours the humans or you are destined to become one of them. Yeah. So technically, it was almost like there's a bit of 
cannibalism involved yeah. in that. Only ever happened in like only ever see them in the northern hemisphere. It's like yeah. so it's there are that migratory legends and, and such that have potentially over thousands and thousands of years yeah. tribes interacting with each other, mm. telling different stories, making these yeah. potentially these creatures in birthing these creatures into into existence with these stories. Yeah, yeah. It's very odd. Yeah, he's very peculiar, yeah. But um no, it's, but it's interesting though that mm. again we sort of harper back to to that you know sort of theory that you can you know sort of talk something into existence and with the introduction of other cultures and you know other stories folklores legends and everything else mm. do they sort of manifest themselves you know to such a point yeah that they do actually become you know you know become real this is the thing I suppose I'm going to get off the fence then really because it's yeah I guess it's about like, time <laughs> yeah it's about that time isn't it? <laughs> so I think that these sort of things do exist yes and they're not necessarily separate from this is something that i'm starting to realize is that the stories create these entities that create these these creatures yeah and if these stories are forgotten these creatures are forgotten as well yeah um yeah true but there's definitely a it's not just um people's imagination or anything like that because there's clearly there's some with regards to the stories that you found yeah there's something that these creatures do mm. that makes people feel uneasy yeah there's an emotional attachment you know to them whether it be positive or, or negative yeah i mean the, the thing is I've, I've said it before we as humans we see a very very narrow spectrum of light mm to what it actually exists. Yeah. We also hear a very, very narrow spectrum of sound. Yeah. You know, that there's there's so much more to sound that we really don't understand in the mainstream at the very yeah. least. And well, we know the, there, there are pitches and, and tones that we know we can't hear or, you yeah, know, well, identify yeah. because of the decibel well, yeah, levels they even, or whatever they even it is. utilize it in um, certain shops now that um, there's a tone that teenagers don't like. So when right. you're at a certain point of development in your right. growth, yeah. there's a there's a pitch that makes you feel uneasy, makes you right. feel a bit sick. Right. And okay. there's some places, even in like in the UK, that have actually utilised this technology to stop kids from hanging outside their their shops, like really? you know after school and all yeah, that. Sort yeah, of yeah. Thing. yeah. So this was something that I found that was quite interesting. And I have to give me that soundbite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with it. I've got on a boombox, <laughs> especially around your way. Yeah, exactly. as well, get it? lost. Yeah, see you later. Uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. bet you could put it out on Halloween and all, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course you are. No, you said it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, so because no. I've, I've previously I've looked at these sort of things and the idea of um, of infrasound. So yes, infrasound is those um, it's the pitches and that that we can't necessarily hear, but you feel but it. But you feel yeah. it. Yeah. So. It's along the same sort of lines as when you, when you're at um, a club or something like that, and you're right next to the bass speaker. Mm. You might not necessarily be able to hear it fully. You can feel it on but your you chest. Can feel it yeah, yeah. You. And that's technically the same way that infrasound works. Right. So, um, infrasound in itself, they they've experts have been able to to manipulate it and and such and, and find a particular hertz mm. that actually invokes emotion within you. Right. So I think it's like about eighteen hurts and it invokes anger right okay which is interesting mm. but when people i can't remember what there it was such a long time ago that i actually looked into it but it's a very low hertz a low infrasound sound yeah. that invokes fear right so what i found what i found interesting about the the road troll ones mm. is that potentially this thing this mm. road troll is emitting some form of infrasound that's making people feel a certain way. We came yeah. across it with the Mothman, where John Keel yeah, kept did. going past the the TNT area. He found yeah. this little spot that little made spot, him feel yeah. really kind of like anxious and like, mm, oh my panicked goodness, and, got, yeah. yeah. And he tested it by going back and forward, yeah. and he found that it was located to a very specific mm. area. Potentially, this phenomena, these these creatures, entities, wherever they may be, yeah. they emit this sort of uh, the, 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 this 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 infrasound either purposefully or mm. it's just part of their existence part of their part being, of their thing yeah that and they they exist in a spectrum of light yeah that we can't necessarily see no 
Um, not all the time, at the very least. No, exactly. Yeah, but if, but like for instance, maybe cameras pick up on this light that we can't see. Yeah, possibly. And yeah. you know, I mean, I've had a few experiences that are a bit weird when I've worked mm. on on like a security desk. Yeah, and cameras have picked something up, and I'm like, well, I didn't see that go by. Mm. You know, I've had yeah, stuff yeah. moments like that previously. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I think that these. <laughs> The potential or the possibility that these sort of things, these manifestations, are, I think it's all just a phenomena. Yes. I think I'm yeah. getting on the same sort of lines as you have in your mm. previous, um, like getting off the off the fence, mm. where you say that it is a phenomena that's manifesting in different ways. Mm. Almost very much like what a lot of people think that consciousness mm. is about. So we're all... there's. I sound really new age right now, but <laughs> we are all one consciousness yeah. experiencing reality subjectively. Right. So, yeah. you know, it, it, so once we all essentially die, we, our consciousness becomes one again, and mm. we, but we've got this collective knowledge mm. of all these subjective experiences. Yeah. So maybe the phenomena works along yeah, those sort possibly. of lines as well, yeah. where it's a single phenomena yeah. that manifests its manifests subjectively yeah. in various different forms based on who's who it's presenting itself to or who is who's looking who's looking exactly so, oh i see said that didn't he yeah <laughs> yeah he did yeah. he did depends on who's looking it does absolutely yeah, so well, i think there is some truth you know sort of to that and yeah i guess i'd yeah i'd agree with you know kind of what you're you know with what you're saying for the most part to get off you know the, you know the fence for me I, again you know if you were to just feed off what you know Disney told you and, you know, and what pop culture references, you know, you saw then, you know, you, you could very well, you know, be forgiven for thinking that it was all complete nonsense. But, mm. you know, like with a lot of these things that we've sort of jumped into, you know, you've, you've, you go back to the origins, you go back to kind of the real world experiences and, you know, and, and sightings. And it, it's hard to, you know, deny at least the possibility that these things do exist. And the more of these things we look into and the more similarities between them all that we find, you know, it's got to be coming from somewhere, you know, and yeah. it, it dates so far back, you know, that it's it's got some, it's got to have some, you know, credence to it. Mm. Um, and so I think that, yeah, they, for the most part, I think they do exist. I think they are probably more of a spiritual being, you know, in terms of how they kind of travel and, you know, appear, you know, to us or, yeah. or present themselves, which is why so many, there are so many encounters, but with slight, different you know appearances um you know with um harry banderson who saw them as small kind of stature more yeah. like you know sort of goblins or or leprechauns i guess like dwarfs and then or dwarfs yeah, 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 yeah. and then the hi ho yeah, exactly yeah, exactly yeah. right yeah more like that and then you know other other people saw him as as a six foot hobo with a peg leg so <laughs> it's about the hobo pouch and the hobo pouch <laughs> so yeah I, th I think you know i think you're right i think a, a certain aspect of the phenomena can lend itself to you know to certainly that that theory um you know as well as them just existing as they do mm. you know i think you've got to give some thought to you know to that sort of spiritual side you know, the legends well. come from somewhere. Exactly. You know, as I say, they come from somewhere. Um, and yeah, just that that spiritual bit, I think, was probably the clincher for me because it, it, it ties it into a lot of the the other um, cryptids that we've gone over and how they mm. either travel or present themselves um, or appear to, you know, to us. Mm. Um, so, yeah, although it was quite a surprise to see that included, I think that was probably, for me, the, the sort of the, the clincher as to why I've sort of landed on the side of the yeah. fence that I have. That's cool. <laughs> so again, you know, we're on the same the same side of it. We've just gone about it, I think, slightly different <laughs> ways <laughs> again. Well, no, I do think, though, but, though I do think we're, we're kind of just, we're getting on the same sort of track yeah. with, our, with our thinking and not this. I guess it's a theory. Well, I guess it's a theory, really, because we can't really prove it. Unless we can prove it, it's all just theory and, and yeah, mm. and yeah. thoughts or whatever, yeah, But beliefs. we are on the similar sort of track with it, really. The more yeah. and more we look into these things, I think, yeah. the more strange happenings we have yeah, yeah. as well that yeah there's something here there's something to it and like mm. john keel said when yeah. you start looking at this stuff it starts looking back yes exactly 
Yeah, you I know? think and I think that's what Sunday with me. I think yeah, Sunday was probably the first for me <laughs> yeah. where they've actually looked back and been like, yeah, we know you're looking into us. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, we see ya. Yeah, you can't see us. No, so. no, no, yeah. So that was yeah, that was weird. So yeah, getting things like that as well. I think the more of those things that sort of happen again, mm. you know, it's hard to ignore. Um, so I think yeah, just sort of shake off the preconceived idea of you know what you think any of these cryptids are either listen to us or you know do your own yeah. do your own dive in and you'll soon find that there is a lot more to these than just you know fairy tales or or you know campfire stories or we'll be putting a fresh whatever. roll of red string on the merch store pretty yeah, soon exactly yeah your very own purchase <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah <laughs> branded red string yeah, yeah. <laughs> with whiteboards to boot yeah, as well. yeah we can yeah. do whiteboards as well <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. um yeah so i guess uh I guess on, on that note, it brings us to uh, the end of uh, another episode. Um, so thank you, as always, for, for joining us. Um, you know, it's much, uh, much appreciated. Um, we want to give uh, another shout out to our Patreon, uh, Justin. Cheers, man. Thank you for thank the you for support. Uh, continued support, yeah, as always. And uh, remember, guys, you know, you too can sign up and support your favourite podcast um, and, uh, you know, be like Justin. Yeah, be just like Justin. <laughs> so that's something I've never okay. thought I'd ever say. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Be like Justin. Be like Justin. If you're going to be anything, be like Justin. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and so to do that, all you've got to do is head to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast. Yeah. We've made it as easy as that for you. It's that easy. Um, you'll have the choice of, at the moment, uh, two tiers uh, to pick from, um, priced at four and six pounds um, plus VAT. Plus VAT. Just as a, a little, uh, just as a little warning, you know, for you guys. Um, I think it works yeah. out to be about one pound twenty on top of the sort of advertised price. Yeah. So it'd be. It uh, it'd be uh, yeah for the for the. For the four Six pound, pound one, sorry, it on, would be yeah. seven pound twenty. And for yeah. the four pound one, it'd be four pound eighty. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. So there you go. They're, they're the you do uh, get prices. your benefits as well for going with the the higher tier guys. Indeed, you do. You get to see uh, these uh, see the ugly mugs. Wonderful <laughs> mugs, mate. You do. Speak for yourself. You do. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> yeah. To sir. Him and this ugly <laughs> mug. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So that's. Um, Yes, that's the uh, the Patreon, and uh, yeah, any any support would be uh, greatly appreciated. Um, and on that note, also remember, guys, that we do have our merch store. Um, we can pick up your own tees, like the ones that we are beautifully modelling. Um, which, if you uh, had the Keen Rambler tier, you'd be able to see for yourself. Indeed. So just for just for Justin, just for you, mate. <laughs> but, uh, he's probably sick of seeing us and them now. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've got more than just the tees. You know, we've got you know keeping current. You know, we've got face masks, um, which look like they might be making a comeback. <laughs> they might possibly, possibly. <laughs> you know, phone cases, you know, cups, everything. Hoodies as well, guys. Uh, hoodies as well. Yeah, exactly right. So anything to hopefully tickle your fancy. Um, for that, just head over to uh, creatorspring.com, follow the usual handle, and uh, the store will be uh, will be there. Um, and last, by and by no means least, um, we want to also thank and give a shout out to uh, the home of Cryptid Ramblers podcast, the uh, the nice new purpose built studio here at uh, Hellfire Studios. Um, we're only forty five minutes uh, from London, uh, and you can do anything from photography um to video and of course podcast content um and just for being a listener of this podcast you can benefit from the 20 percent discount simply use cryptid um at the checkout um head to uh, hellfirestudio.uk uh, for that or go to hellfirecreative.com for more info on all the uh services that are at your disposal indeed um now, as we've uh, we have forgotten a few times, or at least on a few previous episodes, <laughs> we even mentioned it. We even made a joke episode. of it and then forgot to do and it. Forgot to yeah, do it. exactly. Yeah, typical <laughs> us. Um, we'd like to uh, yeah give you a sort of a little teaser um, as to what the topic will be of the the next uh, episode. We mentioned it briefly a couple of times um, earlier, but uh, we will be indeed covering the Wendigo. The terrifying the Wendigo. The horrifying Wendigo. Uh, another linked cryptid. Uh, so keeping us on this uh, familiar journey um, that we're both um, sort of terrified and looking forward to. It's taken a little <laughs> while for us to get to this point because obviously the, the Wendigo is our logo. 
It is, it yeah. So you would have thought we would have been like the first or one of the first to go over. Well, but the we path, had to go over a big man, didn't we? Yeah, so. start with a big man. And uh, it took us down the path that hopefully you've uh, you've joined us on. And um, yeah, so that's what we'll be doing in uh, in the next uh, the next episode. Um, and also shortly after that, we will be doing our Halloween special. Mm -hmm. So remember, guys, get in touch with your you know creepy stories, encounters, sightings, whether they're yours personally or whether you know of someone that's that's had one. And uh, yeah, we'd love yeah. to hear them, and uh, we'll of course read them out on on that particular episode. Yeah, and it, we'll, it doesn't matter. You can give us your name. You can remain or be anonymous. anonymous. Yep, yeah, absolutely Up no problem. You. Either way, choice is yours. So uh, yeah, get in touch either on any of the socials, the uh, obvious handle. We're on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. Um, you can also email us if you choose at uh, Cryptid Rambler Podcast at hotmail.com. <laughs> yep. Do forget the uh, S off of uh, Rambler Ramblers. because I spelt it wrong. <laughs> 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 but it was too late before I noticed. Oh, so uh, it's, yeah. it's out there now. It's out it? there now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, even, just get uh, us on the socials. <laughs> exactly, the socials or the uh, or the email. Um, either way, um, and and right. So on that note, it's uh, goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from me, and. Uh, be careful when you're out there, guys, because uh, you could find a uh, shaved Bigfoot in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> or a wax Sasquatch. Or, yeah, exactly, yeah. An emulated Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> or a puck wood waste. <laughs> like, yeah, like, Absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. That's a good one, I like that. Yeah. <laughs>